So what you should do, first thing upload the data in Hadoop. ODA data.csv should be in Hadoop. Second thing, open this notebook called Raghu, okay, as a reference. We will not directly run the notebook uh, because we'll just explore it a bit, but make sure you have this anyway. You, you don't want to run this notebook as it is because there are so many things and you will not know what is happening. So what I want you to do is that create one more notebook. You can simply say file, new notebook and say PySpark. It'll create one more notebook for you, right? So, and you can copy paste from here rather than running directly here, right? So just copy paste here. And first thing we will copy paste this, okay? So these are the imports you are doing. Now, when you are starting the PySpark shell, all these imports will be there. Some of them you have to import, but most of them will be imported. Now, when you're using the notebook, it is like you're writing your own application, right? So these are some of the standard imports you need. Spark context, SQL context, Spark conf, storage level. So these things are required for Spark, okay? I will tell you when, where they are using, okay? Uh, NumPy for manipulations, uh, division, decimal, we are plotting a lab uh, graph for that pyplot and then matplotlib. So these libraries we are just importing so that we can plot a graph. Can you try this in your uh, session, these two lines, is it working? If it works, I'll tell you what it is. Just copy paste from here, it is commented here. There is a hash, remove the hash and just run this. So using this configuration object, you create your Spark context. You'll say create the Spark context and use this configuration. Where this is very useful, like I said, when you're deploying a production code, okay, you will type all the code in a notepad and there you have to mention, you know, where is the master, how many containers you need. You can also pass them as arguments. It is not always hard coded. If I don't mention these things here, while submitting the code, I can pass them as an argument. You can say num executor this many I want. But most of the people actually prefer this way. They will just set it in their code. So here I'm just setting my parameters for my configuration in the cluster. Using that configuration, I create my SC. So now I have my Spark context object. This is automatically done in the shell. When you start the shell, SC is available, right? So this is already done by the shell. Uh, so now you got the SC, right? And what we are doing, we are reading the captain data, ODI captain, whatever you call, right? So if I look at here, do one thing, change the location. See, I am reading from user, GL faculty, Raghu. So this will be different. Remember when you're creating an RDD, you can mention the number of partitions. So here I'm saying that read this CSV data with four partitions, okay? And Unicode equal to false. So this is the place where, um, uh, but even if you're running, I'm getting that U character. Okay, I tried it, we will see, okay? And then you also say repartition to six. So this will read your data into four partition and it'll just repartition to six. I just wanted to show you that that's what I'm doing. There is no particular use for this. Just want to show it is possible. And if I execute this shell, it should work ideally, let's say. Yeah. And how do you know whether it is actually working? You will do a captain's spelling mistake is there underscore ODIs dot take 10. So you have to do till this and you should be able to see the captain data. So just see whether you can read the data and get the first 10 lines just to ensure that it is running using SC. So we have the data. So, but one problem with this data is that since Spark is not really understanding the schema, it is considering that each line is like a string, right? Even though we have some numbers here like 56, 28 and all, Spark will think everything is a string. It doesn't understand what type of a data you have. Now, if I want to do some addition or subtraction, I cannot do it. Even if I extract this part, it will be a string. So I can't add them or multiply them. That's not possible. So that is where you can apply your own schema. You can actually have a schema for this data. So right now we just read the data and nothing else is happening. And if you don't want to see these things, clear it. Okay. You can go to cell. You know this, right? Clear everything. Otherwise it will be displayed there and just comment this line. Otherwise it will run next time also. So this is, you just wanted to check it. Now you know the data is there, just hash it, comment it. Otherwise every time it will run and show you on the screen, right? So these are basically what you have transformations. So coilies, 
um, and you have actions collect so these are the things you can actually see right so you just create uh, so why are we doing this we want to apply a schema right so this is the actual schema you just have name country carrier matches won lost ties and toes right you just create it in a collection called fields as of now and once you have it you can import something called a name the tuple you can create something called name the tuple so i'm doing this step by step so you will understand so from collections you are importing something called a name the tuple okay and what is the use of this name the tuple so a named tuple is something like we use for pattern matching sometimes so what happens you have a pattern or a schema and you want to match it with a existing data what you can do i created a named tuple here okay and it has captain and fields so the name of this is captain and it contains this fields fields i have defined here whatever fields i have and i will use this named tuple then you will understand why we have created this just understand its name is captain as of now we just created and then what you are doing after this you will write your own function okay so what is this function doing if you look at here you will understand this is a normal python function uh, the function name is called parse records okay it takes line as input so if you run this function what this function will do it can take a line and then split it using comma okay so you you have a csv file right so if i call this function on my csv file what will happen it will read every line split it using comma and what the function will return it will return the captain object actually meaning it will have this captain and within that it will take every field and apply this uh, whatever schema you have created here like name country carrier matches okay and also wherever you want to convert it into integer you are calling it here because the first one is string second one is string this is also string from here it is all integers so if you call this function what it will do it will read your csv file line by line i will call it inside a map so it will apply to every line and it will extract every column it will apply what what we have created as captain so that you have a header kind of thing for this data and each data type also will be defined here these all things will be string here i am manually calling the python python integer i am type casting it right because this is all string i want to make it integer so i say integer integer so this is how you so the similar concept in uh, your uh, uh, similar concept in your uh, scala is called case class so i can say that name dot then i can get whatever is inside ha huh. so this is schema rdd this is called schema rdd where you are applying a schema to the rdd otherwise the problem is if i read a text file so you look at what we did in word count in word file word count i read a file it had lines i was able to operate them line by line like i can say extract this word or count this word but i cannot say give me from seventh column that's not that was not possible in our word count example because there is nothing called seventh column in that word count example here once i apply this it will get a schema it will process the whole stuff but at least you can access the fields that is what i'm saying otherwise it is not possible if i don't use name tuple i i can't access the individual columns that i want with the name so from here now i can say give me only the captains with this something so i can say uh, let's say uh, name of the captain whose carrier is something like that i can access that is why i'm importing name tuple we will see couple of steps if you go further you will see why we have created this a uh, captain object so now if i go here look at this line look at this line this is what you need to understand so this line i'm just copy pasting it here i am saying that this is my rdd captains underscore odi is my original rdd do a map transformation lambda okay for every element call this parse record function where is parse record function this is parse record function so for every line this entire function will be called that means every line it will split using comma extract individual columns and all those columns this captain object will be called which means they will have this structure but uh, even though this is schema it is not 100% uh, uh, what is optimized schema so that's what i'm saying when you want like proper schema like an rdbms table right you have to go for something called data frame we will see that in spark 
This is like for the time being, I want to represent the data in a columnar format. That is why I'm using this. Okay. So I'll run this. Okay. And if I do a captains, so can you see now the difference in data? Do you understand the difference in data now? What is the difference? Ten objects with a schema, whatever field name you have mentioned, like name and a country. It is not a table. Don't think that it will come like a table, right? So these are called a row objects actually. Each row will be converted into something called a row object, captain object actually. So this is called a schema RDD, right? Because sometimes you want to work with schema, sometimes you don't want to work with schema. Right now I want the schema. That is why each row became a schema RDD. Captain object is applied. So otherwise it will just give me ten lines, and in each line I will have Hussein. But I don't know who is Hussein. What is Hussein? So here it is saying name is Hussein. So I can say I want to filter all the names or all the countries like that. I can say. So the important point you have to remember here is that you have to create a name tuple hmm, with the whatever column names you want. Okay, and then you have to apply to the data. Also, this is very important. In your original data, you have to say integer of this field. Otherwise, it will not. Work. Everything will be string. It will read everything as string. And it is useless, or float, or whatever you want to convert, you have to convert there. Okay? No, there is no difference. So here you are saying that I am creating a named tuple. Okay? And the name of my tuple is captain, and it contains fields, and I am storing it as captain. You can change this name; it will work. I just use the same name; it will work also. So here it is a bit confusing. Uh, so the object name here is actually this captain. This is what we are actually getting. Pipeline RDD is where internally treats objects. If you have an RDD of object types, it's called pipeline RDD. I will show you. Okay. So now, if you can uh, come to this point till this point, I'll just clear the output because otherwise it is very messy. And uh, just comment this line, okay? Just comment this line because. Uh, if you don't comment it again, it will run take twenty, and then it's gonna mess it up. Don't do that. And now, what you can do? Look at here, what we are trying to do. So, is this correct data? Yes, <clears throat> because matches. If you look at the tag called the matches. Now, the problem with the schema is that in every row you have the schema. It is not a columnar schema. Like if you look at an RDBMS table, you have a column, right? That is columnar schema. A column has a header, then you have the schema. So here it is like associating a tag with every word like that. You have the schema. So that is why it is very, not very efficient actually. I can't even call it as proper schema. Every word I'm adding a tag like name or whatever I want. I can do some very basic operation, but uh, ideally, if this is the CSV file, I will create a data frame. That's the easiest way to work on that. And you know what this means? Records dot won greater than records dot lost. What does that mean? I want all the captains. Who has uh, a history of more winning, right, than losing the match, right? Okay. Then what I want to do, I will say, Captain more wins dot map. I just want to print this. So countries dot collect. We will call collect and see what will happen. So can you identify what we have done? You said I want all the captains whose record is like they have won more than lost. That is what I am doing here, right? Then I'm saying that from that data, this is that RDD. I just want only their country and match. I want only two columns. What if I want only their name and country? I can say rec dot country and rec dot. What is the field name, right? What is the schema we have one name? Now you see, you are getting the name of the captain and the country. This means these are the guys and the countries where the winning rate is small, right? But do you feel overall writing Spar code is easy? Overall, I mean. Compared with writing a MapReduce code, probably. So this is just word count. I don't want to run. So in the previous example, we got the country and the matches, and you just said reduce by key, meaning you did a word count on the uh, matches. It will add all the matches country-wise. So that I don't want to run. Okay. Uh, you can also do sorting. We have already seen sort by key, and if you want to do ascending, you can say ascending equal to false. This is sort by key. Okay, and you also saw the sort by method. I have shown you this. Okay, uh, but probably I think this data set requires all of them. So I'll just run them. Okay, so we will run them as it is. Probably this analysis requires them in that form. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just copy pasting. 
I will say that I want all the captains where I want the country and the matches only. Okay. And then what I will do? I will say I want to do a word count on them. And if I do a matches underscore countries dot collect. So look at this uh, code and let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, so uh, I, I saw this error uh, a bit of times. So just to give you an idea, right? So when you are creating the notebook, right? You have to say file new notebook and the interpreter has to be PySpar. Some of you have used Python 3. It doesn't give any other information also. It just says I cannot read. I didn't know what was the problem. So the interpreter has to be PySpar, not Python 3. So then what we are doing. So once you get the countries, okay, you can sort them. We have already done sorting. Okay. So you don't have to worry about that. So now you will see there is an RDD called uh, captains 100. Okay. So where is captains 100? So here is captains 100. Can you see? And what is this captains 100 contains? It contains data where uh, they have played more than 100 matches, right? And I'm just using this. Let me show you what I'm doing. Rec of 1 greater than 0. So what is your captains 100 contain? So uh, captains 1001 is not really required because it is not doing anything. It is saying take the second column and more than 0 whether it is greater than 0. Uh, it will not compare actually. It will give you the same same RDD. There is no change in that. But I'm using the same RDD name here. This uh, ca captains 1001 I'm using here. It's the same RDD only. And then what am I doing? I'll say map. I will call a function. I will say give me the name and then what? What is this doing? Float of won divided by matches. So what this will give you? Statistics of the captain, right? Uh, like percentage, right? And then if I do, so this is their winning probability or whatever you call, right? Because you are dividing what? You are taking a float and you are dividing won divided by matches. So out of how many matches? How many were won? So it seems Ricky Ponding is what? 71 percentage almost you can say, right? Out of matches played, 71% was won. Dhoni is like 55% and so on and so forth. So you're just analyzing this statistic statistically, right? Then you can also sort them. So I'll say sort by in the uh, ascending order so that we can find who is the successful captain. So how do you find the successful captain? Map plot live, right? So you're saying that for A, B in result, okay, append A, append B should be able to run. Uh, the error is what? See, what I was doing, so we don't use it normally. When you just run till this, okay, it becomes an RDD. So result is an RDD, okay? And you cannot plot a graph on the RDD directly. So I deleted this initially, then I didn't think that. So, but when you say dot collect, the RDD will be saved uh, into this variable called the result. Now result will not have an RDD, rather, result will have the output of whatever data that you contain and that you can plot. You can't iterate over an RDD, right? So you have to call an action and then that result has to be saved here. Then you can plot it. But now I think you should be able to see that. Yeah, right. It plots. I mean, it is definitely plotting is very simple. It's not rocket science, but here I had a confusion. Okay. So remember this point, directly you cannot run any uh, normal plotting or uh, methods on an RDD. You have to say dot collect. So the RDD will be available uh, in a variable, Python variable. Then in that variable, you can say I want to do whatever I want, right? 